What's up guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School and today is part three of the Ballinger AFR 500 series. And on this video, we're gonna be showing you how to tune using this awesome supercharged C6 Corvette back here and the new Ballinger wideband, so stay tuned. All right guys, so before we get started actually tuning using the wideband, I wanna make sure that everybody's up to speed. So if you missed parts one or two of the series, please go back and watch them because in those uh, series, what we did was discuss where you wanna place your wideband O2 sensor. So whether that's gonna to be to weld in your own uh, O2 sensor bung or use the secondary O2 sensor location or the tailpipe at the back of the system. If you haven't figured that out and you don't know yet, go back and watch part one. In part two of the series, we discussed how to actually set that up in the VCM scanner. So you're either gonna use CAN bus or analog input. If you haven't figured out which one of those you're going to do yet to get the wide bands of two sensor signal into the scanner, please go back and watch that. Now, if you have done both those things and you're ready to go, let's go ahead and start the process. All right guys, so here's where we're at. Uh, we're gonna start up the car. We're gonna observe the wide band, make sure it's reporting correctly. So let's go ahead and fire up the car. All right, we're in neutral. We're gonna start our scanner and we're gonna wait for it to populate. Okay, great. So now uh, you see here, the Y band just woke up because it was reading eight. So now it's waking up here. We're getting a pretty solid mid 14s AFR and it's watered a little bit there. All right, that's okay. Should come back in, there we go, looking good. All right, so this is actually our first test, guys. So our first check. I'm gonna zoom out one time. There we go on the scanner. And you can tell the C6 has a big cam in it. And uh, we've got a pretty big chop going right now. Uh, so that's okay. But what you wanna do for your first test is you wanna watch the wideband and see that you're roughly in the 14s at idle here, especially if you have a big cam vehicle. But also you'll wanna watch these narrow bands here. And the reason being is you'll wanna compare them. You wanna see if they're saying the same thing. So. If your wide band is reporting somewhere in the mid 14s like we're seeing on average here, and your narrow bands are oscillating like this, this is the first step to knowing that you're just fine with your wide bands data because they're matching. So whenever you see your narrow bands oscillating and your wide band reads somewhere in the mid 14s, that means that they're saying the same thing. And that's actually really good because now you can trust your data and you can move on to the next point, which I'm assuming at this point for you is, and probably why you tuned in, is you wanna see some full throttle tuning, right? So. We're gonna go ahead and start that process and we'll get to the full throttle. Guys, so before we do our full throttle pull, we just wanna always make sure we've set our spark, something nice and safe for our first full throttle attempt. And also we wanna make sure the commanded air fuel ratio is good for your build. So forced induction like this car is, we wanna make sure we're commanding somewhere in the mid 11s, typically 11.0 to 11.5 for our first attempt. And uh, if it's naturally aspirated, that's typically somewhere in the mid 12s for the air fuel ratio. So when we're doing our pull, we want to watch for this uh, wideband to read somewhere in the 11.0 to 11.5 range, okay? So let's go ahead and do a short pull from three to 5,000. All right, here we go. So we got some good data here. Let's bring the car to a stop and we're gonna stop our scanner. Perfect, all right, let me turn the vehicle off. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna review our data, okay? So depending on what kind of tuning you're doing, you're gonna be looking at one of two things to make corrections. So I'm gonna zoom in and I've got my wideband data here, which is the white line. So you'll notice we were targeting uh, 11.0 or 11.5. Right here, we've got our actual, which is 11.2, and it comes up here to a 12.5, which is a bit lean, and then it comes back down here to 11.4, and it kind of just kind of rolls all over the place. So there's one of two ways you're gonna correct this using your wideband to do tuning at full throttle. If you're using a vehicle that's mass airflow based and that's the tuning you're doing, you're gonna be looking at this frequency and you're gonna find the point that you had the error. So in our case, our error where we deviated from our commanded of 11 and a half, we started to come up here to a 12 and a half, is this point right about here, about 10,700 hertz. And we're gonna correct this area to about 11,700 hertz. So I'll show you real quick in the tune file where that's done. Right here under engine, airflow, general, and then mass airflow versus frequency. 
And what you'll typically do is go find this range where you had the problem, which was about 10,700 hertz to 11,700. And then you're gonna to wanna to adjust upward or downward by the percentage. Now, if you wanna know in detail how to do this whole tuning process, the Tune School has some awesome courses. You can do them online or learn at home or live seminars, whatever your preference, including private seminars, okay? So in our case, we would take this percentage error and we would say, is this a 5% or a 10% error? And we would do the math and we would say, okay, we wanna bump it up by 10% because we were too lean by 10% and we would multiply. And then we would smooth. Take this low spot here and I'll actually interpolate and we'll go to the high spot over here. We'll go a couple this way and we'll interpolate. Now guys, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but when you're done tuning, make sure your math curve doesn't look like this, okay? It should be a little more linear, but it will never be a straight line, okay? Just understand the rule is, as you go to the right, the dots cannot go down. They can go equal or up, but never down. So this is a good first swing at an attempt to fix this problem using your wideband. However, you may be tuning using speed density. If that's the case, you're gonna to wanna to open up your uh, virtual uh, VE in this case, or just your regular VE table. If you have a GM Gen 3 or whatever you happen to be tuning on. And the process is basically the same. You're gonna find the location of your lean spot. And we're gonna just do a quick check here. And we would say, okay, our lean spot in this case was 4,400 RPM to 5,000 RPM, 5,100, so 44 to 51 and my manifold pressure are the coordinates I'm gonna need. So 140 to 156. And we're gonna make those changes. Now, we would have to go find them in this table. And I know this is not the exact same spot. We would literally just go up here and we would do the same process. We'd say, okay, these are our coordinates and we would make the change. We would bump it up or down accordingly. So understand our video today, guys, is not meant to be a fully comprehensive video. We're just giving you an example. So after you would make this change, you would upload to the vehicle, and then you would go and repeat the same process, and the steps would just basically be rinse and repeat. And always, I always say this, just say it in class, say it anytime I'm talking to someone, keep an eye out for knock retard. And usually people will say, hey, this is all false knock, and they try and turn off sensors. Please don't be that guy or girl. Please be the person that looks at it intelligently and says, well, why was it real? This blip could have maybe been real or not, but if you notice where it started to go lean here, what happened? We got about three and a half degrees of knock retard. If I were a betting guy, I'd say that's probably real because my forced induction Corvette probably didn't really love the fact that it went lean at 12 and a half to one when it really should have been closer to 11 and a half to one. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this quick video on how to do some wide open throttle tuning with your new wideband. If you're interested in learning how to fully tune your vehicle from idle, part throttle, full throttle, all the drivability and everything in between, hit us up at thetuningschool.com or give us a call. Thanks so much for watching. Everybody loves to shop. Shop, 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 shop. It's more of a shop, shop, shop than a potato, 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 which is an older muscle car kind of sound.